of course, part of my life was work. And since I was at work a lot, then my content became work related as well. Mm-hmm. And that's when people really started reacting to that a lot more. And I thought, hmm, okay, people think this is interesting. What if we talk some more about it? And then I kind of just fell into that, <laughs> or rolled into it with not really knowing where I was going, but it was fun. So I just followed it. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Welcome to the 78th episode of the Struggling Scientist podcast. We are a podcast by scientists, for scientists, anybody science adjacent, and perhaps even hobbyists. My name is Susanna, and I'm here with my co-host, Jaron. Hi. In this episode, we will talk with Natalie Riley, the person behind the very popular Life and Sunshine Instagram account, where she shares vlogs and thoughts about her life as a PhD student. We're interested to hear how it all got started and what it's like to vlog your PhD. So let's start. So Natalie, most people will know you as Life and Sunshine, but you are, of course, a PhD student from the Netherlands working in the field of molecular epidemiology. And somewhere along the line, you started sharing your PhD journey also on Instagram. Your videos and your photos of what it's like to be a PhD student have been quite successful, to say the least. And we were very curious to hear more about your journey. But before we dive into that... Could you let us know a little bit more about yourself? What's the one thing you would want our listeners to know about you? And very important, do you have any interesting hobbies? Hi, yes, Um, I'm Natalie. And I guess the most interesting thing or something people should know about me is I am half Dutch and half American. Hmm. So I was born here and then I moved to the US when I was 12. And then I did high school and my bachelor's degree there. So I lived Mm -hmm. there for 11 years. And then I moved back to Holland when I was 23 for my master's Mm -hmm. and then my PhD. So I do have two passports and I speak both languages. And I think that's pretty cool. Yes. Which part of the U.S. (laughs) did you move to? or Uh, North Carolina. (laughs) North Carolina. It's kind of East Coast, a bit southern Mm E. They have some big universities there, but most people, if you've seen anything like uh, movies like The Notebook mm. or anything that's, I think, what's his name? Nicholas Nicholas Sparks? Cage? Oh, Sparks. Never <laughs> Wrong Nicholas. <laughs> yeah. All the romantic movies, they're all filmed and based mm. in North Carolina. Oh, nice. Cool. Cool. Was there yeah. a reason why you came back for, to the Netherlands for your master's and your PhD now as well? I like the program for my master's Mm. here better because Mm. in the U.S. everything was quite broad still and I wanted something a bit more specific that also gave me some options to choose what I wanted to study. Mm. And the program at the FU had the option of two internships that you had to do and you could choose what you wanted to do them in. And I thought, that sounds cool. (laughs) I'm going to do that. For sure. For sure. So most of my hobbies involve sports. Mm. I... When I was in the U.S., I was a springboard diver for a very long time. So like a diving board and then you do flips and then you land in the water without a splash Mm -hmm. if you can. (laughs) Wow. And since I've been here, my boyfriend is huge into kite surfing. So I've been trying to learn to kite surf, but that's (laughs) difficult. (laughs) Um, I can only imagine. I've also been bouldering a bit and I'm going to go do that later today. Oh, nice. And... I've been trying or been getting into doing triathlons. I've only done one so far, but I don't know. I like the endurance aspect of it. And my other hobby is to make jewelry. So I've been making earrings with beads and stuff like that. So, but that's kind of a a newer one. (laughs) Cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And then next to all of that, you're also doing still a PhD and uh, (laughs) sharing it all on social media. That's a nice full agenda, I think. (laughs) Um, so at one point you decided to start sharing your PhD journey on, on Instagram. Can you tell us a little bit about those early days? What made you get started and what was it like? So I started my Instagram account about three years ago and it was 2021. So it's kind of the middle of COVID and there wasn't that much to do at that point Mm -hmm. other than hang out at home very sometimes see friends and then work a lot. Mm. (laughs) And I was kind of looking for a new hobby in a general sense, because I mean, like I said, I was doing 
lots of sports, but you can only do that for so long and you can only work for so long. Hmm. And I'd always liked taking pictures, making videos and things like that. So I thought, well, what if I start an Instagram page? And at that point, I didn't really know what I wanted it to be about. <laughs> I was just like, well, we're going to go put some stuff online and <laughs> see how people react. That's kind of what made me get started. <laughs> mm. okay. And cool. then we just kind of went with the flow from there. And then eventually, of course, part of my life was work. And since I was at work a lot, then my content became work related as well. Mm-hmm. And that's when people really started reacting to that a lot more. And I thought, hmm, okay, people think this is interesting. What if we talk some more about it? And then I kind of just fell into that or <laughs> rolled into it with not really knowing where I was going, but it was fun. So I just followed it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. But so just to be clear then, so your original content was different from what you're doing now. It was mostly to... just random pictures of mm-hmm. anything I was doing in my life. Just Bouldering. a normal Instagram account, I would say. <laughs> I would call that. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, cool that you, that you sort of rolled almost into it. This, uh, indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that also touches on the next question in a little bit, like did you, when you, once you got started on Instagram, did you ex- sort of expect it to reach as many scientists and academics and PhD students as it has? And as you started figuring out that people like what you're doing and like you're reaching these people, like, was that also the aim then to reach more of them with your content? Um, so once I got into more of the PhD stuff. Mm. And I was more also finding other accounts that were doing similar things and seeing what people were interested in and what I thought was fun to do. And so I kind of, yeah, most of my Instagram has been just, hmm, well, let's try this. Mm. And now this is fun. So I'm going to try that. And I don't know. I mean, I wanted people to see it and to follow Mm. it, but I didn't have that many expectations of Mm. if people would actually like it and the fact that people do and did and continue to follow (laughs) is really cool. For sure. But I don't know if it was per se my most aim to be like, I'm going to have this many followers in this many years. I was kind of, I always wanted it to be a hobby Mm. and something fun. So anything around it that happened was fine. (laughs) Yeah, it evolved more naturally than, uh, I guess. Uh, no. And why specifically Instagram? Because I can imagine with all your videos as well, like yeah. TikTok would also be a great platform, I guess. Or YouTube. So, no. uh, Or what? YouTube. Or YouTube. Yeah. So I have, I started with Instagram because I wanted it to be mostly pictures. Mm. Um, but the more I got into it, I also realized that a lot of people do videos and that those are also received well. So mm. I was like, well... Because I did, so I had TikTok before it was called TikTok. I did musically, <laughs> I think it was called. And so I had an account there and I had made videos there before. But then I thought, well, if I can do it there, then I can do it on Instagram too. And mm. since I'm already building Instagram, let's just go with that. <laughs> so I started later on doing videos as well. And I actually kind of really like making those, especially the little like short funny ones. So as long as it's fun. Nice. Yes. Then I'll keep going. Okay. Um, well, now you are sharing a lot of uh, interesting videos and photos and everything online. What is your general aim with that? Are you trying to reach scientists specifically? Are you trying to reach more general audience and tell them about what life as a scientist is like? What, what's, what's your idea b- behind this? Um, who am I trying to reach? I think anyone but also specifically more people that don't know what the life is like Mm. so okay i'll I'll split it into people there's people that don't know anything about it and want to get into it and i try to give them tips on how do you do it and how does holland differ from other countries Mm. in how they treat phds how to get a phd how to survive a phd (laughs) Uh, The other part of it is just to relate to people who are doing PhDs, because I think a lot of people don't realize 
that we're all going through the same thing. And when you post something and people are like, wow, I really thought that that was just me, but it turns out there's like 25 other people here Mm. that feel the exact same way. Then I think it's good to also bring people together that to know that you're not alone in doing the things that you're doing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So I can imagine it's also quite a lot of work to create all the content that you do. Um, You post quite frequently. Was it difficult to do this next to your PhD when you got sort of started with it? And even now, maybe you've scaled up uh, since then. (laughs) It varies. Mm -hmm. So I think also with the PhD, there's moments where you have more time and there's Mm -hmm. moments when you have less time. So there's definitely been times where I've like really wondered if I can even make a video for the day or Mm. even post a picture that day. But I kind of developed some strategies in order to help with just making content. Mm -hmm. So I made a lot of, if I'm doing something that is just a habit in the lab and I don't have to think too much about it, then I just set my phone up and do my work. And that way I kind of have this base content that Mm. I can use to make any type of video, if Mm. especially the advice videos, because it's not necessarily, I usually just overlay the text over Mm. something that I'm doing Mm -hmm. in the lab. So in that sense, then you already have like this cache of videos that you can pull from if you don't have time to make something new Mm. that day. As Mm. well as same goes for the pictures. If you have extra time that day or I had a lot of nights where I was working and mm. waiting on incubation steps. And I was like, well, might as well take a little video one to pass the time and two, because it'll be handy for later. Mm. So then you kind of build up this store and then you can go from there. And since I have a train ride to and from work, that's usually when I build the videos that ah, I'm yeah. going to ah. post that day. Yeah, nice. And you keep all the videos on your phone or like, uh, yeah. I can imagine it also, it, maybe you have the idea for what video you're going to make, but then you already know you have like that video somewhere. Is it easy to find it back? Uh, like, oh yeah, of course. It's that one enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, uh, I have spent a lot of time scrolling through all my pictures, <laughs> trying to find the one thing that I know I made at some point in the past three years. <laughs> it's in there. I just don't know where. <laughs> The fault of uh, content. Yeah. <laughs> I should be more organized, but maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. And very effective also to do that in the train. Mm. Um, how do you come up with, with the new ideas and the new new advices and things like that that you put in your videos or your other content? Much like the rest of my <laughs> process of this whole experience, it's very much how I feel that day. Because I wanted to make sure that this always felt like like a hobby, like something fun for me to do and mm-hmm. not like an extra job on top of the job that I was already doing. So I didn't want to put a pressure of having some type of timetable of today, we're going to do this, tomorrow we're going to do mm-hmm. this. And maybe that works better for whatever algorithm, but I know it doesn't work for me and some days that's not how I feel so it very much depends on how I feel that day and if I feel like discussing something I do have a note in my phone of topics that I think of randomly and possible ideas but it just depends on the day Mm. what I think will be the most fun to do if I have time to do something Mm if it's going to take too long to put a video together or not, (laughs) if I need to make new content, that type of stuff. I can also imagine that depending on the type of uh, content as well, there might be other people in the lab that sort of complicate that, like maybe they're in the way or like if you're in the cell culture hood or something like that. So I was wondering like, what do, because I assume the other people in your lab also know that you do this, I guess. Uh, What do they think about it? Sorry? Most people do, yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, so what did they think about this? Were they supportive from the beginning or are they a little apprehensive about it? How how do they think about it? So I'll start with that. We have a whole bunch of little labs where mm-hmm. I work. And this makes it easy because people 
you, there's not ever too many people in one mm. lab. So as often you're kind of alone in the lab, which makes it easier to shoot content. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, I had a project that required me to work a lot of outside of office hours <laughs> times, which just meant that the labs were going to be less full and busy anyways. Mm -hmm. So then it's kind of the perfect time to Not create sure. something. And if I really wanted to make something and I knew people were busy and I didn't want to get in their way, I'll just wait until they leave and people are done for the day. And then I'll use the lab mm -hmm. because if I'm flexible, I'm not going to make someone move <laughs> their whole mm. experiments. I mean, yeah, seems rude. No. <laughs> I am um, especially impressed also with how much daylight you have in the lab. <laughs> a lot we of didn't it, have I that. <laughs> film in the summer. I try to film more because it's lighter. Mm. And then yeah. you can definitely tell when it's between the time. If it's winter time, then I have a lot more darker pictures. <laughs> mm. <laughs> But if you look carefully, you can tell when <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And as for people in my group, so my supervisor is actually a very big fan of science communication. Mm. And he also, at some point, I think it was last year, he organized a little like, I don't want to say it was a retreat. It was like an off day for the group. And mm. we just kind of hung out together and we did a little workshop together and he wanted it to be on science communication. Mm -hmm. And we all had to present something of how we would communicate our projects to a wider audience. And it was very open on what we wanted to do. So mm -hmm. I actually made an Instagram video for that assignment. And he was a huge fan because I also shared my Instagram page then and he was very excited and people thought it was cool. And I actually still have the video of what I made that day. But since the video I made it on was for a project that wasn't published yet, I haven't mm -hmm. been able to share it. But I, it should be published very, very soon. It's been accepted. Oh, I've read goodness. the proofs, which means that oh. I can finally share this video that I've been sitting on for like a year. <laughs> Somewhere in the vault, you can scroll yeah. back. <laughs> I know that one's in a summer folder somewhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's a thing a lot of scientists struggle with. Like, what do you post on social media? Because your own, your research is still not available yet. And I think yeah. um, you did it in a, you, you fixed that in a very good way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I try to make sure that most of my posts aren't actually about the research mm. I'm doing. I'm more about on the PhD side of things. Yeah. But once my work is published, then I'm definitely going to share it and try to explain it to people. So when I can share it, it's definitely coming. Do we get to know how long the video is or was? Is it like a 10 minute thing? Uh, it's, like, it's basically just an Instagram reel. So I want to mm. say it's max 30 seconds. Ah, okay. Cool. Now that you've been on Instagram for a bit. What have been some of the sort of positive sides and maybe also some of the negative sides that have come from from being so so open and, and transparent on Instagram and sharing content on Instagram? I would say the positives are definitely connecting with people that you never would have connected mm -hmm. with otherwise, especially in different countries and that do either very similar things to you or just have the same experiences as you do mm -hmm. and being able to meet some of them as well. That's super fun as well as just getting feedback from people online who really appreciate the things that you post and like the things that you post and say, Oh, this is great. Thanks for sharing this stuff. That mm -hmm. makes me really happy. <laughs> um, I was trying to think of a negative thing because I, so far, I haven't really had to deal with too many people being negative about mm. my Instagram page, but it, I would say the negative is always being uncertain of what you post and if that will be received okay. Mm -hmm. And if it's like okay to post the things that you're posting, mm -hmm. because I mean, they're pretty basic things, but you never know, especially uh, if I'm going to be looking for a job soon, if that would be received in the same positive way that I see it as. Mm. <laughs> so, I mean, there's some question marks always with it, but 
in the greater sense, I still think it's fun and I think it's important to share. So I'm going to keep doing it. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, did you also get any opportunities for your career out of this already? Or did you ever get recognized at congresses or things like that? <laughs> uh, opportunities for a career? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day, but it's definitely not big enough yet. I have been recognized, not on the street, but at a conference. And I was not expecting it because I didn't go to the conference expecting anyone to know me because I think it's kind of weird to walk in and be like, yeah, don't you know no. me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Natalie, duh. <laughs> so, but when they did uh, find out who I was, they, everyone was super excited about it and like, oh, I like your content, that type of stuff. But then still like it didn't make it different or anything with the people that I had connected with at that conference. We were still just friends and it was just an extra thing about me. And mm. I really liked that, that it wasn't like changing anything about the dynamics. Yeah, it didn't make it awkward. It just added on top of. Yeah, the, yeah nice. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I also don't think. In terms of career opportunities on Instagram, there are too many, too many PIs just scrolling around <laughs> and things I like that. I do know of one PI. I went to a, a PhD defense of a, an ex-colleague of mine. And on the opposition committee, there was a PI who also has an Instagram account. And mm -hmm. I, we didn't stay afterwards, so I didn't actually talk to him. But he sent me a message on Instagram. He was like, I saw you. I was there. I was in the opposition. I was like, whoa. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Networking. So it's funny. There are PIs out there that have Instagram accounts that talk about how it is to be a PI, which mm -hmm. is also very interesting. And useful as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. But Instagram is usually not the one that people think about first when they're talking about like things like networking or, or yeah. like for scientists. I think like, it's mm. becoming bigger, mm. but I think for scientists, they're still quite stuck on Twitter and things mm. like that. LinkedIn but also, yeah. LinkedIn very much for sure. <laughs> but mm. I think it should be broader and it should be more accepted that people share this type of content about what they do yeah. online. And I think yeah. it's useful to people and as well as getting the word out about the research that you do. Yeah. And also as, as, as creators who are on basically every platform except for TikTok, um, I think also the, the people on Instagram are just very, very nice and kind and Yeah, it's a very supportive. And, yeah. yeah, I think so too. I've heard of, I mean, I've seen comments on other people's pages that aren't always very nice. <laughs> I'm just wondering in a general sense, why, why be mean? But mm. in a general sense, what I've experienced is very positive. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's often certain topics like AI gets, gets some discussions going and things like that. So. Yeah, definitely. But that's on every platform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe just a last, uh, I don't mean to put you in the hot seat, but sort of what is next for you? And are you going to take people along on, on this journey as well as you move forward? So I definitely 100% will keep making content and taking people along because it's fun mm. and I want to. So why not? <laughs> <For sure. laughs> um, it is a good question. What my ph or my my instagram account is going to become mm. because i am at the end of my phd now and i am trying to figure out what i'm going to do with my life now mm. and what that means for my instagram but i figured i'm just going to kind of keep trying mm. and making posts because i'm sure there's also tons of people out there that don't know what to do next mm. for and sure want to understand what that is about. And once I do decide what my next career step is, explaining that to people, why did I choose this? What is interesting about it? Mm -hmm. Etc. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that is also something that a lot of people are interested in. And also not a lot of people talk about it on Instagram. So that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think sure. it's hard <laughs> because it seems like such a negative thing. Like, oh, I don't know what to do with my life, but... 
that's it, it that's life i guess <laughs> you don't always know what you're gonna do next yeah. no i think every phd student experiences that at the at the end of their phd like oh my god no, no yeah. what i do <laughs> <laughs> and what yeah. options are there and why are there so many <laughs> yeah mm. have you ever what? considered doing social media as a job uh i have considered it but i think for me i do actually really like the science aspect mm. of what i do so i want something i think this would still stay more on the side as i still pursue something scientific mm. for sure <laughs> okay well thank you so much for talking with us uh, natalie we love having you, guys you for as a having podcast me. Uh, yes we love having you as a podcast guest um if people would like to find you how can they do so um, instagram i assume of course on instagram <laughs> it's life underscore and underscore sunshine <laughs> And I also have a TikTok, which I'm pretty sure is life, the same handle, mm. or it might be life and sunshine with a one at the end. Okay. Okay. I'm sure they will be able to find you. And threads <laughs> as well, right? And what? Threads as well. Yeah. Threads yeah. is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. For our listeners, if you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, you can reach out to us via our website, thestrugglingscientist.com. You can also check out our website to sign up for the awesome Journal of the Strongling Scientist, also known as our newsletter. And if you have enjoyed this episode, then leave us a rating on your favorite podcast listening platform as it helps us reach more struggling scientists out there. And there are a lot, so... <laughs> you can also follow us on social media. Jaron, which ones are those again? X, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. And threads. And threads, yes. <laughs> we still need that. that one. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening, and we hope to see you again next time. Bye. Bye.